Michael, uh, seems like Jimbo Fisher is on the tip of a many, many people's tongues today. What, what, what about you? What, what, what's to make out of the uh, ever interesting Jimbo story? Yeah, well, first of all, I appreciate you, Paul, as always, for having me on. But, hey, I hate to say it, A&M thought they were getting the next Nick Saban. They got the next Les Miles. And, and let's just call it what it is. <laughs> I mean, he's an offensive guy. He's supposed to be a quarterback oh, whisperer. Oh, laughing. I can't remember the last uh, good quarterback he's brought in there. And even Kellen Mond, I, this is what I've been saying in the offseason, never – Kellen Mond looked great as a sophomore under Jimbo. I was thinking, my goodness, it, this guy could be all SEC – Never really got better, and he had an elite running game to rely on. It's always somebody else's fault, Paul. Zach Calzada was was the problem last year. Well, it may be bold to say, Paul, you know, I love to say bold things. I think A&M probably has a better shot against Alabama this week if they had Zach Calzada after what we saw him do against the Crimson Tide. So I just can't wait to see who's next to blame. It's, it's nobody's fault. It's never Jimbo's fault. It's everybody else's fault. Well, A&M people are, are naturally digging in. Uh, we all know the backstory, the investment. Um, but at some point, uh, when is there a meeting of the minds about what the best direction for this program is? Well, here's the thing, Paul, and I think I'll, even myself, I overlooked this. I thought A&M had enough talent to where they could overcome Jimbo's coaching, and they just can't do that. So naturally – we got to get around Jimbo somehow. We've got to force him to bring in an offensive coordinator. I would even suggest a play caller, Paul, because he's he's changed running back coaches, receivers coach. Kirby Smart run off uh, Coley. Jimbo ran him in. It looks like we're we're seeing uh, the, the offense that Georgia had that uh, that led him to have Todd Munkin, which of course went to the national championship. So we've got to bring someone in here. You know, I I said this in the off season. I think. I don't know if Joe Brady is that's a realistic option for A&M because I don't know if Joe Brady wants to coach in college, but that's what they need. They need to bring someone in there to modernize this offense, get them. They have all these receivers, Paul. They get some of the best receivers in the country. They do nothing with them. Uh, they need, and I'll tell you another one, Paul. I know I, know I come on here and I, and I get people upset. What they need to do is go up to Arkansas, steal them Kendall Browse. If they had a, a competent offensive play caller, Texas A&M's got the rest of the pieces. They they would be an SEC and a college football playoff contender. But as you know, Michael, uh, to do all this, you have to have a head coach who's willing to get out of his own way. And so far, there aren't any indications that, that Jimbo Fisher is going to do that. And is there anyone like his boss uh, who, who could lead him to do that? I don't think Jimbo's got a boss. I mean, he's playing with house money. He's got $95 million coming his way, fully guaranteed for some reason. I guess because Scott Woodward had a crush on him. And if I'm an LSU fan, I think that's the, the best thing that ever happened to us was not being able to pry Jimbo Fisher back to Baton Rouge. Brian Kelly, you want to talk about coaching. You know, he's got this team duct taped together. He's got freshmen on the offensive line. He's got sophomores on the offensive line. This, this team is... I don't know how they're doing it, Paul, but they're currently undefeated in the SEC. It's because Brian Kelly and his staff is coaching up this team. We'll see if that holds with Tennessee coming to town. But, you know, that's that's the difference right now. A&M doesn't have the coaching. LSU does. And A&M is looking up at LSU in the standings, which is just pitiful. Just to, you mentioned you alluded to it a minute ago or somebody did. Uh, as you look at the, the A&M schedule, they're, they've lost twice. I'm going to go ahead and chalk up one more this weekend. Uh, it doesn't matter now what happened with Arkansas. Realistically, as, as we uh, look at the schedule, and I'll, I'll just read it to you. I guess you can see it too, can't you? Uh, we got Alabama. That one looks like a third loss. The second half of the season, South Carolina, Ole Miss, Florida, at Auburn, UMass, and LSU. How many, how many wins do you see over there? Two, maybe three. I mean, South Carolina, surely you think they could beat them, but Shane Beamer and company – I mean, they've been pretty pitiful on offense themselves, Paul. If they get that thing going, they've got a good home field advantage. They've been known to upset a team or two. So I'll give them South Carolina. But again, what are we talking about here? We're saying A&M, which a lot of people had slotted as the second best team in the West, should be a playoff contender. Yeah, they started out number yeah. six in the country. <laughs> Maybe they could beat the fifth best team in the SEC East. Maybe. But again, I'm not even giving them that. They'll, they'll beat UMass. And uh, I'll give them Auburn, too, because I don't... Uh, I don't know if Auburn can win in a conference game at this point in time. So we're looking at seven five. Is that is that that's 
two more losses after Saturday, that's a, that might be, I don't know if that's being charitable or, or, or short-sighted. And you know, I mean, what, what, is, what does Jimbo Fisher say, uh, if he, if he, even if he goes eight and four? Uh, and that's only one more loss after Saturday. I mean, that, 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 is, that is not great. I mean, eight and four, two years in a row? Come on. Yeah, A&M fans get tired of the eight and four jokes. They'll be begging for eight and four by the end of this slate, Paul. I mean, it's just a disaster. I mean, they've not put together a competent game. They were, you know, I'll give them credit for beating Arkansas, but there were some interesting plays in there. We, we've all seen the doink and everything like that. But, uh, I mean, Miami looked pitiful. That, that's one of the worst teams I've seen come into an SEC house. They showed me nothing. Uh, what have they done? And I, and I don't understand why everyone's got Jimbo's back. I'm not s sitting here saying we should – Fire him. We should buy him out, Paul. We're spending all these people's money, but uh, you know he—he's just—he's putting the people. He's lucky that he's got a good defensive coordinator. I'll say that, Paul, because he's been living on defense. I guess that's the only part of that A&M program he doesn't touch. He is recruiting. He's got the third best roster in the SEC, Paul. He may have the third worst team in the SEC. So th they have got to blow this offense up, and I don't know how you do that. They looked a little bit better going up tempo. I guess you go that direction, but the only problem with that, you know, I don't like to sit here and blame the players, but Haynes Ging, he's, he's got about, he throws about as many interceptions as Brett Favre. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.